Hey y'all, Shelly here with another tip for hospice nurses. So I had some requests to do a, do a video on continuous care documentation. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Now I think that it's important in continuous care that we make a note at least every two hours and your agency may even have an every one hour policy. So follow your agency's policy, but no less than every two hours. And when we first start the continuous care, this is usually easy to do because we're dealing with some kind of symptom, we're doing interventions, we're figuring out what works, and then we're going to get to that point where it's it's all working and your patient's resting quietly. And I think this is where the issue of how do I document comes in. So that's what I'm going to focus on. So let's say our patient's resting quietly. We don't want to document patient resting quietly, no acute distress noted. Um, we need to say something that supports our reason for being there and for continuing the continuous care. So my first note during this quiet period, I'm going to do something like hospice intervention of Haldol and Ativan effectively managing agitation as evidenced by and talk about what the patient looks like. Then the next two hours, I'm going to say the same thing, but I'm going to do it in reverse. I'm going to start with what the patient looks like and what I did. So I will say something like patient lying in bed, eyes closed, no evidence of agitation noted as patient's calm, peaceful, no restless movements noted, suggested that hospice intervention of Ativan Haldol continues to be effective. Um, patient does require continued monitoring to determine therapeutic dose or therapeutic levels or whatever you want to call for that. Then my third note, I'm going to do a system assessment of something that supports hospice eligibility. So let's say if this patient has some, you know, they're they have a weak inspiratory effort, bilateral breast sounds diminished to bases, patient requires oxygen at two liters per nasal cannula, something like that. Then my fourth note, I'm going to document an education because you know you've provided education. So what did you do? It could even be home safety education. It could be something, but you're, pro you're providing some kind of skills service, so document that on my fourth note. So then on the fifth note in my little in this little series, I'm gonna go back to what my first note was. Hospice intervention of Haldol and Ativan effectively managing signs of terminal agitation as evidenced by. And then I kind of start that cycle again. I'll do that one, then I'll flip it for the next one, then the next one I'll do a different system assessment. Maybe their skin, what does their skin look like? And then the next one I'll do a different education. Did I educate this time on skin breakdown and turning and those kind of things. And I just keep doing this over and over. So you're showing skills. You have a little idea in your mind of what you're gonna document and what it's gonna look like. They meet CC criteria and they meet hospice criteria. And you've made your agency very happy because your documentation should do well if you do get audited. So I hope this tip was helpful. If you have anything, tips that you think would be helpful for hospice nurses, please let me know. I'd love to share them here. And remember, together we can change our world.